Hello there, my little chittering friends, and welcome to another lore video about the one and only master race of Warhammer Fantasy. Having talked about the mythological origins of the Skaven, and some of their actual history in the previous two videos, I have decided for today to go a bit deeper into their lore. So, in this episode we are gonna talk about their society and castes, their language and their clan hierarchy. I am your host, for today the Grey Seer Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado let us learn more about the ways of the Skaven, shall we? Skaven society is often divided into two types of social system, which is separated between a caste system and a clan hierarchy. The caste system focuses heavily upon the color of a Skaven's fur, which denotes the Skaven as being assigned to a particular role in society. Those born with horns and grey or white fur are considered chosen of the horned rat, and thus are presented to the priest or religious caste of the Under Empire. Due to their influential and political power, they are also the most obvious leaders among Skaven groups. Those born without horns, but have white or grey fur, are typically taken to be trained as the albino storm vermin guard of the Council of Thirteen. Below the priestly caste is the militaristic warrior caste, that are composed almost exclusively of black furred Skaven. Black fur is considered the mark of a killer, and Skaven of that color are therefore given a position in society that focuses heavily on training those individuals into hardened warriors. In certain cases, a Skaven who does not possess black fur can still join, if he can prove he is just as effective a warrior as any other black fur Skaven. Such situations nonetheless ensure that the Skaven would at least dye their fur black, so as to keep their image as elite warriors. Below the warrior caste is the general population of brown furred Skaven. The brown furred Skaven form the very foundation of Skaven society, making them the most diverse in terms of profession, quality of life, and social status. Being outside the caste system, the brown furred Skaven are often divided even more into certain sects that focus on professions such as trading, building, and the crafting of weapons or goods. All of these groupings allow the Skaven to apply their urge for social climbing on a much larger scale, each sect battling for supremacy over the other, just as each Skaven battles for supremacy within his own sect. Outright warfare between these groups is not as common as many would think, simply because the priest caste often moderates hostilities between factions by use of terror and cruelty. In their case, the priest caste wants to ensure full control over the Under Empire, and without some form of unity, the Under Empire as a whole cannot truly function. The chittering and hasty language of the Skaven is known as Queekish. Skaven dialogue is often littered with a hodgepodge of rapid squeaks and trills. Queekish words are short, clipped, and often repeated many times in a row in an effort to add emphasis to statements. Due to the speed with which Queekish is spoken, long sentences are often broken up into several fragments. As such, these fragmentary sentences must be pieced together to form coherent thought, especially during long stretches of dialogue. The written form of Quickish consists of several thousand pictograms, each representing a single word or concept. Most Skaven know the most important pictograms, while only a few can recite them all. As new discoveries are made, new pictograms are devised. Many are so similar as to be indistinguishable to the untrained eye. Writing is accomplished by the use of a sharpened stylus or an extended claw. Many Skaven records were kept on wax or clay tablets, but the use of ink on parchment has become very popular with the Grey Seers and Master Molders. The Skaven are able linguists, 
and are able to learn the languages of the old world, so they may better deal with their slaves or enemies. Though they see other languages as inherently inferior to their own, they find that they are often valuable tools in the advancement of their cause. Their linguistic habits of repetition and quickly spoken words carry over to the other tongues they can learn. The voice of a Skaven is often high-pitched, squeaky, and displays a somewhat whiny character. The Skaven exudes several different musks, depending on their emotional state. Though secretion of these musks is largely involuntary, many Skaven learn to hide their emotions from their companions by will alone. Only a handful of surface dwellers are able to distinguish between different Skaven musks, to the majority of non-Skaven, the Ratmen only stink of urine and wet fur. The most common Skaven musk is referred to as the Musk of Fear. Unsurprisingly, this Musk of Fear is secreted when a Skaven is afraid. Though most of the Skaven are in a near constant state of anxiety, they only exude it in truly terrifying circumstances. This, of course, depends on the individual Skaven, for some are much better able to face their fears than others. In any case, what frightens one Skaven may not necessarily frighten another. The Mask of Fear is a tool of survival, and it allows a single Skaven to warn his fellows that something is horribly wrong. When displayed between individuals, it is almost always a sign of deference, indicating that the Skaven who exudes the musk is, for whatever reason, displaying overwhelming awe and fear towards the leader. On the battlefield, however, the musk of fear can cause a warlord's best laid plans to collapse. Whole units of Skaven clan rats have been known to rout to the last ratman once the musk of fear is spread through their ranks. The second most common Skaven musk is known as the Musk of Battle. The Musk of Battle is scented when a Skaven community has reached its upper limit in regards to population density and availability of food. More acrid than the Musk of Fear, it signals a slow but steady rise towards war for a warren and rides the foul air of a Skaven nest until battle is joined or the situation improves. Entire populations of Skaven have been incited to fury by this particular stink. Outside of the caste system, Skaven society is usually dominated by a treacherous clan-based hierarchy, from which clans of warlords make up the bulk of the ever-growing population of male ratmen. These militaristic clans, known as warlord clans, form a hierarchy defined by the law of might makes right. At the top of the hierarchy is the Warlord, hence its name, who is supposed to be the most cunning and strongest individual in the entire clan. Below the Warlord is the Warrior caste, which, as expected, is composed of black-furred Skaven trained as warriors. As befitting their prestigious position, these Skaven are given the best the clan has to offer, which often includes adequate and regular meals, his own personal lodging, the best weapons and armor, and the right to breed with the clan's female Skaven, simply known as Breeders. At the base of this pyramid hierarchy, the foundations on which all society is built around, is the so-called working class, the insignificant and expendable slaves or workers. These slaves and workers can be of varying race or culture, and are often prisoners of war or members of a rival clan that has since been subjugated into submission. Within this harsh reality, the concept of life and individual freedom are next to worthless within clan society. Survival is considered paramount to the individual, and so is the ascension of social status. Although they rarely admit it, nearly all the Skaven view their clanmates as potential enemies. Skaven who occupy positions of power or authority are very envied for their power, while those ratmen who served in lesser roles are constantly suspected of treachery. 
The daily clan life of the Skaven is often marked by continuous fighting and power struggles for supremacy. A Skaven's life is a lawless and miserable world where the weak are killed and the strong survive, provided they constantly watch their backs against rivals. Among their own kind, backstabbing and betrayals are not considered dishonorable behavior, but simply the most traditional way to advance in society. As a result, this unstable system has given rise to very high levels of paranoia in nearly all Skaven leaders within all levels of society. All the Skaven know their status within the clan, but the positions between them can change very rapidly. A few betrayals, or even a single well-given stab in the back, can convert a lowly soldier into the position of paw leader, even before the body of his victim has dropped. In the same vein, it can be said that a Skaven warlord or chieftain will always and forever be only a stab away from his subordinates. Everyday life at all levels of Skaven society is marked by this constant pushing and nudging in relations of power, as each individual is conspiring day and night to improve their own personal reputation or status, or undermining others among their group. Alliances are created, broken, and then reformed constantly as a consequence. There is not even equality between individuals of the same social status, as there will always be someone in the group who is considered ahead of the other. Every Skaven scrutinizes all other pack members within the group, looking for weaknesses that can be used against them, and as a result would often be scrutinized by the former also. At all the levels of the pyramid, but especially in the lower classes, the power struggles often take the form of direct physical confrontation. Many Skaven suffer terrible scars from these battles, and many may often lose an eye or an ear as a mark of brutality. A crippled Skaven resulting in one of these confrontations usually doesn't last long, and will eventually be eaten by the more desperate of their kind. If the loser does not get killed instantly, the cheering mass will pounce on him to disembowel and devour him in his weakened state. In the Skaven case, a crippled clansman is simply a liability and will be eaten for food. All the clans constantly fluctuate in the number of members they currently have. This stems mostly from the fact that Skaven population numbers often increase exponentially during times when food is plentiful, and then come down drastically during times of starvation. At its greatest extent, a warlord Skaven has the power and influence to control a clan with around hundreds or even tens of thousands of individuals, spread across many dens or underground burrows all across their occupying territories. The exact number of the different clans that are scattered through the Under Empire is almost uncountable. Clans growing too fast or too slow will eventually lead to internal rivalry, which would be the result of the warlord not exerting enough authority on his own subordinates. This will eventually lead to small-scale civil wars between small factions within the clan. Of the many diverse clans that engulf much of the Under Empire, there are none so powerful militarily, politically, or influentially as the so-called Four Great Clans. These ancient clans consist of the Warlock Engineers of Clan Skarairi, please correct me if I'm mispronouncing it, the Fanatical Plague Monks of Clan Pestilence, the Assassin Adepts of Clan Eshin, and the mutated war beasts of Clan Mulder. These clans hold the greatest occupation within the Under Empire, and whose wealth, power, and influence has the potential to change the political and social landscape of the Under Empire on a whim. Their power extends so much so that the leaders of each clan occupy a seat within the Council of Thirteen. I will not be going into detail on the great clans in this episode, because I obviously wanted to cover them in individual episodes. Under these four great clans, a massive number of diverse and multicultural clans 
make up the bulk of the entire Under Empire. Though the vast majority of these clans are far smaller and weaker than the Four Great Ones, some have either become very powerful, wealthy or numerous, as to be on par with the Great Four. Again, I will not be going into detail on these, as I wanted to cover them separately once again. But I do want to mention them by name, so you see who they are. Clan Mors, Clan Rictus, Clan Scab, Clan Scruton, Clan Carrion, Clan Festerlingus, Clan Grytak, Clan Chrysor, Clan Macris, Clan Murkit, Clan Rickek, Clan Scurvy, Clan Scuttle, and Clan Sleekit. And that, my little friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Skaven for today. If you guys want a specific clan for me to cover in the next Skaven video, do feel free to write down your suggestion or vote in the comments below. Was this video informative or enjoyable? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more content. Thank you kindly for watching, and may the Horned Rat watch over you.